More and more people are worrying about their financial investments. This follows chaos in global markets. China's markets have closed at a rough week on a high note. The Shanghai Composite closed 2% higher on Friday, but for the week it's down 1%. So far this year, the Dow Jones Industrial Average is down 1,000 points or 6%. It was the Dow's worst five-day start to a year on record. So joining us this morning to talk about protecting your money is financial advisor Titus Pittman. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. So what is causing what's going on in the global markets in China right now? Well, I would say one thing that causes the market to go down is, is really uncertainty. And we started 2016 with a lot of uncertainty from North Korea uh, doing some testing on the hydrogen bomb uh, to Iran and Saudi with the oil conflict. And then we have China, some, some of their de uh, stabilization of their currency, which led to some downturns in their economy. And so all of these things together really affected what we saw here domestically on our stock market. So is this just a bad start to the year? Is this the market overcorrecting itself? Um, I would say a bad start, uh, but also it's a little uh, it's cause for panic. Uh, people really trying to still figure out what is the growth rate of China. Uh, China historically has been in a double-digit growth rate, which means you have more consumers buying and selling goods and services. And now with the devaluation of their currency, some people think that they're actually manipulating the currency and not that growth rate is really not going to be there, which really affect uh, ex consumer goods and services throughout the global economy. So with the panic on Wall Street, should people at home be panicked as well? Should they be pulling out their money? Uh, I would say they should be cautious, optimistically, uh, because there's a lot of great things happening here domestically. As you said before, oil prices went down, which actually means we have lower gas prices at the pump. That in itself gives a tax break to us consumers to actually spend mo money into the economy. Also, we had great job numbers came out on Friday. The economy is still growing, and unemployment rate is real low. So I would say there's a lot of great things going on here domestically, and, and no uh, cause for concern. But people, let's say that they have a short-term horizon, should they be the ones worried? People that are looking for their money, let's say, within 12 to 18 months? Uh, absolutely. If you have a shorter time horizon, 12 to 18 months, those investments should be in liquid assets or, or shorter-term fixed investments. If your time horizon is longer than that, then I would say it would be time now to reevaluate your overall time horizon and make sure that the investments that you currently have in place are quality investments. And if so, then I would say ask yourself three major questions. If I don't have a need for this money now, and my time horizon has not changed, I would stay the course and continue to look at these as entry points into the economy to slowly put money back into the market at these lower levels. And what would you say to people that have a longer time frame about this market downturn? Well, know that the market will go up and down over time. That's a, no, a, a known fact. But any three, five, and 15-year period of time, the market has always been positive. So I would look at these as entry points. And if you have money currently in the, in the market, don't panic. Reevaluate your overall investment objective. If you don't have a need for this money within 12 to 18 months, then stay the course because the market will cycle back over time. How can people diversify their portfolio? Because you always hear people should put a certain percentage of their money here, a certain percentage of their money here. People with longer-term ranges, how should they put their money into the market? Well, it really depends on a person's overall situation, but different asset classes would be one. You can also diversify yourself by having domestic investments as well as international investments. You can have bonds, stocks, as well as mutual funds and some cash derivatives inside your portfolio. So these are all the ways to diversify your portfolio. If you have an income need, these should be more toward a fixed income investment. And you were mentioning that this really isn't like 2008. And I know after 2008, it took a little while for the market to recover. How long do you think it's going to take for the market to recover after this? We feel that's going to be a short period of time because, as I said before, as we look at the pure data, uh, the market actually should be up right now. Uh, but when you have, when you have uh, fears and, and, and uncertainties in the market, that drives the emotional panic in the market, which really takes our level down. There's three types of news we will always hear in the market. There's good news, there's bad news, and uncertain news. Depending on the type of news that we hear, it really will affect the market because you have to realize that a lot of people investing in the market are emotionally tied to these assets. So that really affects what they, the decisions they make. But over time, if you look at the pure data and what's going on globally, the United States is the largest economy in the world, so that means if there's positive things happening here, then the rest of the world will usually follow suit, and then you can really appreciate the investments that you make over this period of time. Uncertainty is certainly something that people don't like. Thank you so much for your insight. As always, we really appreciate you joining us. And to follow the latest developments with the markets in China and the United States, you can just log on to newsforjackson.com and click on the Money tab.